Praise the Lord. Church, I said, praise the Lord. We saw the beginning of the year. We're coming to an end. We're still alive. And we're up and doing. We're healthy and strong. I know I am healthy and strong. I welcome you to the final Sunday worship of this year, 2019, in Jesus' name. The Lord promised us at the beginning of the year that this year will be the best we ever lived. Well, you are the final solution retreat. How many of you are there? Huh? You are all there. Somebody over there that was not there. Were you there? Did I see you there? I didn't know I saw you. Did you see me there? If you saw me, I saw you. And this year coming, as we see each other, even the fellowship and the presence will be miracle in your life. Yeah. Now, for some time, for some years, we have not had the direct impartation, ministration at the night, at the watch night service. We have, you know, transmitted message, good, good messages, powerful messages. But this year, God gave me a special message. Twenty twenty. I said twenty twenty. When you go to the optician, you want to take glasses or whatever you want to take, and they take your the measurement of how far you can see. Actually, many years ago. When they used to test their sight, the acuity, the vision, the clearness, they'll put some letters 20 feet away. And then they will ask them, read this, read this, read this. It's from there, when they now get their sight and they give them their prescription, because of the 20 feet between him, the patient, and the thing is reading, when he can see very clearly, that's how they brought out the 2020 vision. And now, this watch night service, I won't tell you the whole thing yet, but. There's going to be a 2020 impartation. Yeah. Clear. Yeah. Definite. Yeah. Unmistakable. Yeah. There's no problem for you this coming year. Yeah. You'll be healthy. Yeah. You'll be strong. Yeah. You'll be happy. Yeah. You'll be holy. You'll be fulfilled. 2020, 20, blessing in your life in Jesus' name. Now, for the final service of the year. You'll think I'm talking about healing. Yes, there's healing. But I'm talking about God's gift of a better life for you. Everything better. Your life better. Your family better. Your profession better. Your spiritual life better. Your success better. Your achievements better. And your power, your strength, you will climb mountains. Tell your brother, tell your sister by your side, better. Say it now. Say it very well. Better things for everyone this coming year in Jesus' name. 
Okay, now you've told each other. Can you tell me too? You pray for me better, higher, stronger, healthier, holier, more powerful. As you wish for me, I wish all of you better. Let's pray together. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you because you have planned, you have provided, you have promised better things for every one of us. And we're asking, oh Lord, our lives will be better. Our blessings will be higher. Our lives will be richer. And we pray, oh Lord, you will do better things, greater things, stronger things, broader things for everyone in Jesus' name. Everything that downgrades is taken away. Everything that upgrades is brought into our lives. Make each of your people without exception better this coming year from today in Jesus' name. Confirm it in every life. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. We're coming to Isaiah chapter 56. And I'm reading from verse 5. Isaiah chapter 56, verse 5. Even unto them will I give in mine house and within my walls a place and a name better than of sons and of daughters. He'll give you a name. He'll give you a title. He'll give you an identity. He'll give you a personality better than the sons and of daughters and I will give them an everlasting name that shall not be cut off. Ezekiel chapter 36. I'm reading from verse 11. Ezekiel chapter 36 reading here from verse 11. It tells us in verse 11 of Ezekiel chapter 36. And I will multiply upon you man and beast, and they shall increase and bring fruit. You will increase. Your family will increase. Your business will be enlarged. And in your place of work, civil servants, there will be promotion in your life in Jesus' name. It says, I will settle you. You'll be settled. You'll not be shifted here and there. You'll not be moved here and there. You'll not be living in insecurity. And you'll not be living in uncertainty. The Lord, this coming year, will settle you. And I will settle you after your old estate. Think about that. Think about that. Every good thing you had in the past, you are recollecting them back. And then it says at the end of that, that verse 11, it says, And will do, and will do, somebody there, and will do better unto you than at your beginnings. And you shall know that I am the Lord. Somebody help me shout better. Look at Hebrews chapter 11. Hebrews chapter 11. We're looking at verse 40. God having provided some better thing for us. In that chapter, he's been talking about Abel. He's been talking about Enoch. He's been talking about Abraham. He's been talking about Noah. And he's been talking about Sarah. He's been talking about the parents of Moses. He's been talking about Moses. And then he talked about Jacob and Joseph and Isaac. And he talked about all the prophets. And he told us, revealed unto us, all that God has done for them any of them, every one of them. And now he says, God 
has provided some better things for us. As I look at the coming year, and I look at what God has said, and God cannot lie. God is faithful. God is a faithful God, mighty, powerful God. And when he decides something, it's going to be done. My young brother, my young sister there in the youth section, campus section, maybe you've had some challenges and you have been thinking, how is life like this? Cheer up now. I said cheer up now. Wipe all those tears away. No tears in 2020. God has provided some better things for you. I'm talking to an orphan there. I'm talking to a girl that doesn't have parents. So maybe you have parents, but they cannot take care of you. The Heavenly Father will take care of you. More than as the parents can take care of you, He will provide. He will supply. God has provided better things for you. There are times we've done our best. We've gone to, you know, the people who can help, help physically, help spiritually, help in any way. And the help, even though it came, has not actually reached the point we'll say, I'm all right now. This coming year, you'll be all right. Because God has provided some better scene for us that they without us should not be made perfect. They without us, without looking at the better things that the Lord has provided for you and for me, all the rest of humanity and the people that have been before us, they will not be complete without us. Can you imagine that the Lord is saying that all the other people, no matter who they are, in their assembly, in their congregation, at their united together, will not be complete without you? You didn't hear that one. Because you're not just an appendage. You're not just you know, a redundant person. You'll be significant. Even the people in your family will know that they cannot be complete without you. Your life is going to be better. Your achievement is going to be better. Your testimony is going to be better. There were great testimonies this past year. But we're going to surpass all the testimonies we heard in Jesus' name. The topic today, God's gift of a better life for you. God's gift of a better life for you. Three things we're looking at. Number one, his offer of boundless grace. His offer of boundless grace. What he offers us, even at the gate of the kingdom, grace. To get saved, he offers grace. And to get sanctified, he offers grace. And to have power and authority and strength that nobody else can match, all by grace. And then to fulfill the calling of God for your life. The reason why he brought you to this life, grace you'll find this coming year from today you'll find that everything you are called to do even what you didn't know how to do well grace will come every walk of your hand grace will come every strength you need grace will come and so when they ask you can you do this don't say i cannot you can and when they say, will you do this? Don't say, I'm not experienced. I don't think I can do that. You will. Because the moment you get there, what you didn't know before, you will know. What you have not seen before, you will see. And the spiritual dynamite that you need in your life, grace will supply in Jesus' name. Number one, his offer of boundless grace. Number two, our offering 
of better gifts. Our offering of better gifts. You see, the Lord is going to turn us around. That not only that he offers us boundless grace, we ourselves, you become a giver. You give a smile, you give love, you give joy, you give cheerfulness. Somebody who wanted to commit suicide before just looking at you and just hearing your voice, he said, how am I going to kill myself? Look at this man, look at this woman. You will offer good things to other people in Jesus' name. And you will offer to God. And what you offer to God, it will multiply a hundredfold and give it back to you. You give uh, 10 naira, it's going to multiply a hundredfold, a thousand, it'll give you a thousand. And so, the more you want, the more you need, the more you desire, you offer the very best unto God. The Lord will surprise you with abundance this year. Number three, the outpouring of His best. It's not just going to give you a trickle. It's not going to give you something at the bottom of the, of, the, of the kettle. It's going to make it an overflowing blessing for you. Outpouring for you. Outflowing for you. Overflowing for you. The outpouring of his best for the godly. I mean for something wonderful. I'm going to get something wonderful. This coming year is going to be a victorious year. And a glorious year for you, for me, for us all in Jesus' name. Tell me number one. The offer of boundless grace. Look at Romans chapter 3. In Romans chapter 3, I'm reading from verse 23. Romans chapter 3, I'm looking at verse 23. It says in verse 23, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, being justified freely by His grace. He wants to justify you. He wants to tell the devil that all your sins are forgiven and you are just and justified in the sight of the Lord. What do I do to have that, Pastor? Do I cry? Do I roll on the ground? Do I go to River Jordan? Do I drink holy water? Do I drink olive oil? Do I fast? Do I punish myself for the sins I've committed in the past? To have that justification, look at verse 24. Being justified, what's the next word there? Freely is for you. The grace of forgiveness is for you. And the grace of freedom is for you. And the grace of joy, joy untold and joy unlimited, the joy of salvation is for you from today. And being justified freely by His grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God has set forth to be a propitiation through faith in His blood, to declare His righteousness for the remission, removal, cleansing, and for the taking away of sins that are passed through the forbearance of God. He takes away all your sins and He gives you the righteousness of Christ. He will do it. Look at First Timothy. In First Timothy, I'm reading from chapter 1. First Timothy, chapter 1. And I'm reading here from verse 14. First Timothy chapter 1. And we're reading from verse 14. It says in verse 14, And the grace of our Lord was exceeding abundant with faith and love, which is in Christ Jesus. That's Paul. It was Saul, an injurious person. A terrible person, a wicked person. He will go into homes and arrest men and women. He didn't care for gender. He didn't care for anybody crying. He just wicks them into the prison. And if he wanted them to die, he will get the nursery papers and get rid of them. 
a man like that said, you find me in church, you find me in the kingdom, and you find me talking about Christ, he said, it's all of grace. As you are there this morning, the grace of God covers you. All the sins you have committed, we read it in the Bible, that's not just me talking. And it says, the grace of our Lord was exceeding abundant. It reaches you where you are, and whatever you have done, forgiveness has come. Salvation has come. And it is with faith and love, which is in Christ Jesus. Look at this, look at this, this. Is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptation that Christ Jesus came into the world to do what? To save sinners, to cleanse sinners, to forgive sinners. And you say you're a sinner, that's right. He came to save. And when we call him Jesus, we call him by his name. He is Savior. He's your Savior today. He said, to save sinners of whom I am chief. Of whom I am chief. Look at Titus. Grace has come. Abundant grace. Overflowing grace. Surpassing grace. Look at this. Titus chapter 2. I'm reading here from verse 11. For the grace of God that bringeth salvation as appeared as appeared as appeared as the sun rises in the morning and it rises and that sun rises for everyone and appears to all men when the rainy season begins as the rain appears and begins to fall it doesn't exempt you. It doesn't exempt your house. Falls on everyone. Grace has now appeared. Grace is now available. You don't have to stay outside the kingdom. Come in. And as you come in, all your sins will be forgiven by the Lord in Jesus' name. All by grace. And he offers us, he offers you, he offers me boundless grace. It says, for the grace of God that bringeth salvation has appeared unto all men. And we were ignorant before. We didn't know this is right, that is wrong. Now the grace of God comes and it teaches us to be upright. And it leads us to be upright. Because the grace of God does not leave us how and uh, where it met us. If the grace of God does not make any change, then that grace is not necessary. But the grace of God turns our lives around for the better. It'll turn you around for the better. Teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly loss, we should live soberly and righteously and godly in this present world. In this present world, you will demonstrate the salvation of the Lord. You know, before the grace came, when temptation came, you just fell. You didn't have the power to say no. You didn't have the power to resist or to deny. But now grace has come. And grace is watching at the door. When the tempter knocks at the door, he says, don't worry to answer. Grace will answer for you. And then grace will say, who is that? He said, I'm a tempter. And this is my, my victim. I used to tell him to do this and do that. And grace said, I'm not living inside him. Before I came, you could make him do anything. Make her do anything. But now grace answers at the door. And he says, go back. This man is no more for you. This woman is no more for you you will overcome the tempter. You'll overcome the temptation. All the things that the devil will bring in your life, praise the Lord, you now can deny all those things and say, no, I can't stand. You will stand. Teaching us 
that deny ungodliness and worldly laws, we should live. How do I live? I said, how do you live? I should live soberly, righteously, and godly. Where? I said, where? In that same place of work, that same professional uh, association, and in that place where you have had difficulty, and you were always ashamed. They call you pastor, pastor. They, when they say that, they want to, you know, tell you to do something, and so that you'll be ashamed and drop your head, and then they bring uh, their bombshell. But from now on, in this present world, I said, in this present world, you raise up your head, you square your shoulders, and when those people come, and they use the, the name they used to call, when they make, want to make you submit, you look up, and they can tell it's no more a victim. I'm no more a victim. Victory will come in Jesus' name. And the grace within you will say no to the enemy and to the tempter. You will live soberly. You will live righteously. And you will live godly in this present world. Looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of our great God and our Savior Jesus Christ. Who gave himself for us. Who gave himself for me. Who gave himself for me. Who gave himself for me. Why? Because I wanted something from heaven. I wanted some blessings from heaven. And my hand couldn't reach heaven. I jumped. I couldn't reach. I fasted. I couldn't reach. I denied myself. I couldn't reach. And I'm looking for that thing. And Jesus Christ, the ladder that goes from earth, to heaven, he says, don't worry. And he puts the ladder at my feet. And because he is the ladder, everything I need now, I don't even have to stretch too much. He gave himself for me. Now I receive. I said, now I receive. The days of poverty, spiritual poverty, and the days of regret and crying, all those days are gone in Jesus' name. The days of being anemic, no blood, no strength, no energy, no power, no authority, just barely living, almost dying, those days are gone. Life has come. Abundant life has come. Spiritual life has come. And eternal life has come. And it has come for you. I said it has come for you. He gave himself for us. I always remember that. And in this coming year, if there's something I'm to do, and the devil wants to remind me, I'm actually talking you know, to you, I'm making myself an example. Is that all right? And then the devil says, you're not strong. You cannot do that. Because it's not like, you know, before when you could jump up and run up and down and all that. I say, let me read a verse to you. You know, this coming year, if the devil comes, I read the Bible to him. This coming year, if the tempter comes, I say, hold on, hold on. I'll open the Bible and read the Bible to them. And you know how I read the Bible? I read from Genesis to Exodus to Leviticus and Numbers and the and Joshua and Judges and everywhere. He'll say, that's enough, that's enough. And they will run away. Because, you understand, He, Christ, our Savior, our Redeemer, our Sanctifier, our Healer, He gave Himself for us that He might redeem us from all iniquity. That He might redeem us from, tell me, all iniquity. No iniquity will find root in your life. No sin or transgression will find root in your life. There is no place to stay. 
it's like if your plant, if your plant is seed on dry ground, rocky ground, stony ground, that thing will dry up. And if the devil tries to come and plant iniquity in your life, iniquity in your soul, there's no fertilizer in your heart for iniquity. It will dry up. I said it will dry up. I said it will dry up. You will live a righteous life. And then it says to purify, to purify unto himself, it will wash you clean. It will purge you. It will purify you. And you'll become a peculiar person, zealous of good works. Zealous of good works. I can't hear my people. Acts chapter 15. Acts chapter 15. I'm reading from verse 9. Acts chapter 15, we're reading from verse 9. It says in verse 9, and it puts no difference between us apostles and them Gentiles, purifying their hearts by faith. Purifying their hearts by faith. Your life will be purified. Your thoughts purified. Your imagination purified. Your action purified. Your character purified. He is the one that will do it. He'll do it effectively in your life in Jesus' name. How? Look at verse 11. But we believe that through grace, through the grace of the Lord. That's how it happens. That peace through grace justification through grace and the removal of all iniquity through grace and then the purity purifying their heart by faith through grace we believe that through the grace of the lord jesus we shall be saved we apostles we jews even as they gentiles amen in your life I'm coming to Hebrews, Hebrews chapter 2. In Hebrews chapter 2, I'm reading from verse 9. Hebrews chapter 2, verse 9. Look at this. It says in verse 9, but we we'll see Jesus. You will see him. Every time there's a need in your life, you will see Jesus. Every time you're thinking of something, you'll see Jesus. Every time you're praying and you need an answer from heaven, you will see Jesus. But we we'll see Jesus. You see, there are people, they see devils and demons almost everywhere. And they see evil spirits and this and that pass of darkness this year. You've seen enough of Satan in the past years. Now you will see Jesus. You've seen enough of evil spirits and paths of darkness. They are coming, they are coming. That's enough now. You've seen them enough in the past years. From now on, you will see Jesus. But we we'll see Jesus who was made a little lower than the, than the angels for the suffering of death crowned with great and with glory and honor look at this that he by the grace of God that he by the grace of God should taste death for every man how many people I said how many people for every man to taste death for every man, that means the soul that sinneth, it shall die. And you had sinned in the past, and you want to die. But now Jesus said, come aside, I'll take your place, I will taste the death for you. And that's why he died on the cross of Calvary. And he was buried, and he rose again. And thank God, a spiritual death is taken away from you. 
the word of God says, and whosoever was not found reaching in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone. And then it says, and this is the second death, the second degree, the final degree, the everlasting death. Now Jesus has taken that away from you. You will not perish. You will not go to hell. I will not go to hell because he has tasted death for every man. And the moment you believe and you say, I accept that, second death is taken away from you in Jesus' name. And the spiritual death as punishment is taken away from you in Jesus' name. Not only that, there is premature death. There are people... They, they have just established business or they're just married or they're just getting to marry and they're going to do something happy, something cheerful, something good, something exciting. And then we're here a few days before that great thing going to happen in their lives. They said something happened and they died. Premature death. He has tasted every form of death for you. Premature death will not take place. Whatever you see in the dream, that one is dream. I'm talking about the word of God. The word of God will cancel every dream in your life. Christ has taken death, premature death, spiritual death, final death, and second death. He has tasted it for you. Look at, look at verse 10. For it became him. For whom are all things, and by whom are all things, in bringing many sons, many daughters, many followers, many children of God to glory. Where is he taking you to? I said, where is he taking you to? He's bringing you to glory, and glory will be in your life in Jesus' name. You know when somebody is having glory, splendor, Happiness, joy, majesty, honor. You know, you see him, even the way he walks and the way he talks and everything. You see, this man is on top of the world. This woman is on top of the world. What am I talking about? Glory. In your life, glory. In your disposition, glory. In your spiritual attainment, glory in Jesus' name. That in bringing many sons to glory, to make the captain of their salvation perfect through suffering. Verse 11, for both he that sanctified and they who are sanctified are all of one, for which cause he is not ashamed to call them brethren. Brethren of the Lord, brothers and sisters of the Lord, he will not be ashamed of you. He will confess you before God. He will confess you before the angels. He will not be ashamed of you in Jesus' name. Uh, look at 1 Corinthians chapter 15. And I'm reading from verse 10. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 10. But by the grace of God, I am what I am. By the grace of God, you'll be what you ought to be. By the grace of God, I am what I am. And it's grace that which was bestowed upon me was not in vain. The grace of God will not be in vain in your life. And then he goes on to say, At the grace of bestowed not in vain, but I labored more abundantly than they all. You know, those who do not labor, there's something happening to them. They don't have the grace. They don't have the grace. The grace is available. They are not taking the grace. But those who labor, and those who say, I'm available. Those who say, my skill, I lay on the altar. My strength, I lay on the altar. My knowledge, I lay on the altar. My ability, I lay on the altar. Laboring more than them all. What does that mean? 
there were those who have been apostles of the Lord before, before Paul the apostle came into the kingdom. They saw Jesus in his earthly work. They saw Jesus being betrayed. Paul was not there. And they saw him being crucified. Paul was not there. They saw him buried. They saw him rising from the dead. They saw him after rising from the dead. Many of them. And then they saw him uh, in uh, power when, he, when uh, he baptized them in the Holy Ghost. I remember James, I remember John and Peter. Silver and gold have I none in the name of Jesus what I have I give unto you. Rise up and walk. And Paul was still a sinner then. And then, many years after, Paul the apostle came on the scene. He had lost much time already. And now that he came, he said, I need all the grace I can have. You need all the grace that will be made available. And then he got the grace. He got, and that man began to run and he said, I labored more abundantly than all of them put together. Think about that. I visited more cities than all of them put together. I experienced the power of God and I experienced the overflowing majesty of the Lord more than them all put together. This coming year, it will happen to you. You will be what you ought to be by the grace of God. Every day you wake up and it appears you are tired and you are wondering, can I do anything today? Grace will flow in. Anytime there is a wall of demarcation between you and the achievement and you are wondering, can I do anything today? Grace will flow in. And you will do, listen, and you will do more than you have ever done all your years put together in Jesus name it says that the reason I know the grace of God was not in vain but the grace of God which was with me abundant grace super abundant grace great grace marvelous grace it has come already Acts chapter 4 and I'm reading from verse 31 Acts chapter 4 verse 31 and when they had prayed that was prayer the place was shaking when they were assembled together and they were all how many of them and they were all I said how many of them filled with the Holy Ghost and they speak the word of God with boldness and the multitude of them that believed of one heart and of one soul neither said any of them that aught of the things which he possessed was his own but they had all things come on it will happen to us it will start in the house fellowship and then in the zone and then in the district and it will be in a central church and every local church every need will be supplied every need of your life every need of other people's lives will be supplied by what we have in jesus name look at verse 33 and with great power gave the apostles witness of the resurrection of the lord jesus tell me the rest Tell me, I see if that's your expectation. And great grace was upon them all. Our own time has come. Because of that great grace, we then offer unto the Lord better gifts. Point number two now. Our offering of better gifts. Our offering of better gifts gifts. Look at Hebrews chapter 11. We're reading from verse 4. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 4. By faith Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain. A more excellent sacrifice 
than sinful Cain, a more excellent sacrifice than self-centered Cain, a more excellent sacrifice than self-willed Cain, a more excellent, excellent, excellent sacrifice than stubborn Cain. As you look at Cain, he was a sinner. Abel too was a sinner. But Abel came to the Lord and he brought a better sacrifice unto God. And he said, I cannot bring the works of my hand. That will not save me. But I take a substitute, a lamb. And he offered that to God. And that was acceptable to God. But Cain, simple Cain, he said, my good works are good. My crops are better. And you offered that unto God. And God said, no, I don't want that. The earth is cursed. The land is cursed. And you're offering that to me. Look for something better. But Cain was self-willed. And when the Lord spoke to him, he will not answer. He will not give the sacrifice that God expected. And Cain was selfish, self-centered. And what he thought is what he wanted to do. He was stubborn. If your sacrifice has not been accepted, the sin of freeing is at the door. But that man was self-centered, self-willed, and stubborn and sinful. I will not be another king. I said, I will not be another king. By, by, by faith, Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, by which he obtained witness that he was righteous. The blood of the Lamb cleansed him, forgave him, made him righteous, and there's a greater Lamb, the Lord Jesus Christ. Behold the Lamb of God that taketh away the sin of the world. As you touch him, as you rely on him, all your sins are taken away. And he makes you righteous in Jesus' name. God testifying of his gifts, better gifts. God testifying of his gifts that he and by each being dead yet speaketh you notice that it says by faith look at Romans chapter 14 Romans chapter 14 I'm reading from verse 23 Romans chapter 14 we're reading from verse 23. Look at this. Look at what it says. And he that doubteth is damned if he eat, because he eateth not of faith. What we're looking for is the last line. For whatsoever is not of faith, tell me, a sin. Whatsoever is not of faith, any sacrifice that is not of faith, any offering that is not of faith, any giving that is not of faith, any help that is not of faith, any ministry that is not of faith, a sin in the sight of God, whatever we offer. There are people that offer their time. There are people that offer their talent. There are people that offer their tithes and offering. There are people that offer material things. There are people that offer a service, a sacrifice. If it is not of faith, it is sin. If it is not of love, it is sin. If it is not according to the scriptures, according to the demand and desire of God, However good that sin may be, it is sin. For whatsoever is not of faith is sin. I will not offer anything which is not of faith. You know, there are people 
even preachers. There are preachers that offer their service and their ministry and their preaching with anger, with hatred, with animosity. There are preachers that offer their offering while they're preparing their message. They have that person in church is a troublemaker. They have that person in church and, you know, it's, uh, it disturbs. They have, they have that person in mind while they're preparing and they carve out some verses for them. Today, when we get to church, I'm going to preach, really preach. And when I preach, all those people... This uh, coming year, I take no nonsense from anybody. And then they throw stone there, they throw stone there. The preacher is wasting his life, wasting his time. Whatsoever is not of faith, a sin. Whatsoever is not of love, a sin. You will offer your gift with love in Jesus' name. You will offer your gift of faith in Jesus' name. And with grace, you make grace available for everyone. You are not close the door to that person. Grace is for the rest of you, but this person no grace. You will have all the grace of God you need. And the preacher must preach by faith and love. And the ministers must minister by faith and love. Because whatsoever is not of faith, tell me, tell me, tell me, is sin. And whatever is not of love is sin. We're coming to Proverbs chapter 23. Proverbs chapter 23. And I'm reading from verse 26. Proverbs Chapter 23, verse 26. My son, give me thine heart. You know, that's the offering, the first offering he wants. Give me your head, not yet. Give me your hand, not yet. Give me your power, not yet. Give me your money, not yet. Give me your feet, not yet. Give me your education, not yet. Give me your training, not yet. My son, Give me thine heart. It's only after that we can offer the better gift unto the Lord. When your heart is totally given to the Lord, you say, Lord, you have my heart, you have my mind, you have my love, you have everything of God without any reservation. And when you do that, the favor of God will be multiplied in your life. And then it says, and let thine eyes observe my ways. There are some people, they want to offer something to God, and they are preparing, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do this, and their eyes are not observing the ways of the Lord. So they offer whatever they offer in their own way. In their own way because they are not paying attention to the way of the Lord all they want is offer service offer sacrifice offer this and offer that but you know days coming here even from today you first of all offer your heart unto God and then your eyes and your mind and your vision will observe the ways of the Lord any amen coming from the house? In Second Samuel chapter 24. Second Samuel chapter 24. Our offering of better gifts. Our offering of better gifts. Second Samuel chapter 24 verse 24. And the king said unto Arauna, Nay, but I will surely buy it of thee at a price. I will surely buy it of thee at a price. You see, there are people that do, do not know that the service of God is precious. Giving ourselves to God is precious. Offering anything to God is precious. We need to teach ourselves and teach our children from when they are very young. You tell your children, I'm giving you this amount of money. When we get to the church and they say it's time for offering, you must give this amount 
to the offering. On the way, don't use the money. Don't spend the money to buy granules or biscuit or coca, whatever. But you'll give this to the Lord. You know, my child, this money I'm giving to you, if you offer it, God will know your faithfulness. He will know your love for him. He will know your faith in him. He will multiply that thing you give because now that I've given to you, it's yours. And you're giving it to God. And you deny yourself. Even though you see other children, they're doing whatever they want to do with the offering. Don't do that. Give it unto the Lord. The Lord will multiply blessings in your life in Jesus' name. And if we train our children to grow up like that, when they begin to work, they themselves and in money, they would remember that if I give to God, already they have series of testimonies in their lives. When I give this to God, look at what he did for me. When I give this to God, look at what he did for me. And they will not be given. They'll give their time. They'll give their money. They'll give whatever they have. And great will be the blessings of your children in Jesus' name. And we who are adults, fathers, and mothers, young adults who have not married, when you earn up money, there's a lot of need in our personal lives. I need to pay house rent. I need to, you know, pay the money I got from the bank when I was maybe uh, studying. I need to pay back that. I need to buy clothes. I need to buy this. I need to buy that. I'm even saving money to buy a motor vehicle. All the same. It says, I will not offer, I will not give anything unto God that costs me nothing. When you give to God, you give cheerfully. When you give to God, you give a better sacrifice. You make it a sacrifice. As you look back through this year, if you have been faithful in paying and giving God one-tenth of your income, Praise the Lord for you. But now, you are going to go beyond 10%. Amen. Yeah. Why not 15%? What are you doing arithmetic and geography and geometry and, you know, algebra and division and multiplication and bodmas with God? What are you calculating? And then you are slicing it. And when, uh, you know, Ten naira remains. You even want to cut it into two and say, "Okay, that's for God. This is for me." Why don't you give everything, even if it goes beyond ten percent or beyond fifteen percent? You'll be surprised how God will bless you this coming year in Jesus' name. And when let's say somebody gives you money, not just salary. You've got salary. You pay the tithe and the offering, and then somebody gives you now a gift. That gift, why can't you even pay time from that again? And then somebody gives you something you are not expecting. Why don't you give tithes out of that? Look at that verse 24. Name, but I will surely buy it of thee at a price. Neither will I offer bond offerings unto the Lord my God of that which does cost me nothing. I will not offer anything that costs me nothing. You will offer something precious. Something that will make you know that this is sacrificial giving. We offer our best gifts unto God. Malachi, I'm reading from chapter 3. Malachi, chapter 3. I'm reading from verse 8. Malachi chapter 3 verse 8. Will a man rob God, calculating, dividing, subtracting? Will a man rob God, Ananias, Sapphira? Will a man or a woman rob God? Why did you keep back part of the prize? You have not lied unto men, you have lied unto God. Will a man rob God? Yet ye have robbed me. But she say, Wherein have we robbed thee? In tithes and 
offerings. Look at verse 10. Bring ye all the tithe. How much of the tithe? Bring ye, tell me, all the tithe into the storehouse, that there may be meat in mine house, and prove me now here, or says the Lord of hosts, if I will not open the windows of heaven. You see, those who are not faithful in offering the best gift, the better gift unto, unto the Lord, they close the windows of heaven against themselves. But it says, prove me now. From now on, you'll prove the Lord. If I will not open the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, that there shall not be room enough to receive it. And I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes. And he shall not destroy the fruits of your ground. Neither shall your vine cast a fruit before the time in the field, says the Lord of hosts. Verse 12, read it personally. Verse 12, 1, 2, 3, go. Did I hear your name there? Say that again. I'm waiting for your name. Finalize with us an amen. amen. And all the nations shall call you blessed. For ye shall be a delightsome land, says the Lord of course, we're coming to Second Corinthians chapter 8. Second Corinthians chapter 8. And I'm reading from verse 5. Second Corinthians chapter 8. Reading from verse 5. In Second Corinthians 8, 5. And this they did, not as we hoped, but first gave their own selves to the Lord. First of all, gave their own selves to the Lord. The first thing you do, you give your heart, you give your total personality, you give everything that you are, you give yourself unreservedly unto the Lord. And then it says, and to us by the will of God. You know, there are people that will say, I'm serving God, I'm not serving man. That's an excuse. There are people that will say, I'm giving myself to God, I'm not giving myself to any man, not giving myself to any church, I am only to serve God. And whether they appreciate or accept what I give or not, that does not concern me. I'm only serving the Lord. It's an excuse. Those people do not know the word of God. Look at this. Second Corinthians chapter 8 verse 5. And this they did, not as we hold, they went beyond our hope. A desire, our demand, but first gave their own selves to the Lord and tell me the rest. Say it now. And unto us by the will of God, we give ourselves to God and we give ourselves to leadership. And if the leadership says, this is the way to do it, we give ourselves to them. If the leadership says, don't do it this way, don't do it that way, we've given ourselves to God and cheerfully and happily, we give ourselves unto the leaders after giving ourselves unto God. We will do it. Look at verse 12. For if there be forced a willing mind in giving to God and giving to the church and giving to the leadership and having a supportive ministry 
to the leader in the church, it says there must be a willing mind. If there be forced a willing mind, it is accepted according to that a man has, not according to that he has not. We have a lot. We have a lot of gifts. And we're going to give wholeheartedly and cheerfully unto the Lord in Jesus' name. Chapter 9, 2 Corinthians chapter 9, I'm reading from verse 6. But this I say, he which soweth sparingly will reap sparingly. He who sows grudgingly will, eat, will reap grudgingly. He who sows can tell I can, we can barely see what the fellow is suffering of his time, of his energy, of his treasure, of his willingness. He sows sparingly, he sows grudgingly, he sows can he will reap sparingly. It will reap grudgingly. It will reap also scantily. And he which soweth bountifully. He which soweth bountifully. Anybody there? You'll sow bountifully in Jesus' name. And you know, sometimes some people tell me, and they say, we saw you at the final solution retreat. And uh, somebody was, you know, telling me in a gentle way, in a loving way, we thought you'll cancel Saturday workers' meeting. At least, you know, you finished that so that at least you can sleep and rest. Even Sunday worship, why? They can meet in their districts. They wanted me to so sparingly. I understand, I understand, I understand. They are, you know, taking care of me and they love me and they say, why don't you at this time rest a little bit and so sparingly and so scantily, they wanted to take my blessing away. But I'll keep on sowing. Cheerfully, I'll keep on sowing. Bountifully, I'll keep on sowing. Happily, I'll keep on sowing. And when I'm tired, I'll sow more. I said I'll sow more. And then I will reap bountifully. New strength will come. New power will come. New ability will come. You know, since we finished the retreat, I'm even now stronger than I was at the beginning of the retreat. The only thing that is not there is what I voluntarily put aside this time. That's the tie. Voluntarily. Don't put, off, don't put off your own tie. This is just me. So much power has come. So much anointing has come. So much authority has come. That temporarily I said, there's so much, there's so much. What can I give up now? I said, okay, okay, tie, stay aside. When I want to pick it up, I'll pick it up again. Are you happy? Or don't you get some because there's no tie? Because of that, there's no tie, no anointing. That's anointing. Bountiful anointing. You know, our lives this year, coming year, will be happy and cheerful. Look at verse 7, look at verse 7. Every man according as he purposes in his heart, so let him give, not grudgingly of necessity, for God loveth a cheerful giver, and God is able to make all grace abound toward you that ye always having all sufficiency in all things look at the all 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 there for you i said for you that god is able to make all grace abound toward you 
that she always having all sufficiency in all things may abound to every good work you'll give the very best point number one his offer of boundless grace point number two our offering of better gifts point number three the outpouring of his best to the godly the outpouring the overflowing and the outflowing of his best to the godly the lord is going to give you the very best you'll enjoy the very best every day of this coming year the best of god the best of gifts the best of benefits the best of the spirit the best of power in your life in jesus name look at first corinthians chapter 12 first corinthians chapter 12 i'm reading from verse 31 first corinthians chapter 12 verse 31 but covet honestly the best gifts there are people that don't desire anything they don't demand anything all the preaching all the promises everything when we say let us pray they keep quiet they're looking here and there brother won't you pray why do i pray whatever god wants to give me is a loving god let him give me sister won't you pray why pastor should i pray whatever god wants to he knows i'm here and he knows what he wants to give me let him give me but it says you covet earnestly with all your strength with all your stamina with your voice clear and with your desire with the passion covet earnestly what kind of gifts the best gifts look at um, chapter 14 verse 1 chapter 14 verse 1 follow after charity and desire spiritual gifts desire run after that pray on that you pray here when you get back home you spend some time you say lord i realize you have a lot for me promises power provision every good thing i can have i covet it now i desire it now i demand it now desire spiritual gifts you will have them first corinthians chapter 1 verse 5 in first corinthians chapter 1 verse 5 it says that in everything he enriched by him in all utterance and in all knowledge that you look at your life this area i'm a father this area i'm a preacher this area i'm a worker this area i'm a community man this area i'm this and in all those areas you say lord put your grace in my life that i will be the best in every area in jesus name some are good in church but they're not so good at home some are good in the office up and doing but they are not available in the church some are good to their friends but they are good to brothers and sisters in the church look at all the areas of your life and say this year i'll be my best i'll do my best i retain the best in my life in jesus name you know there are some people see them now for some hours they're cheerful they're passionate they're loving they're smiling everything is okay after about two hours they've come to their limit if you meet them at that time you say to yourself i understand i understand it's been nice and vigorous and 
excited and it's been so good and wonderful and now we're having uh, the remnant of what remains it will not be so in your life Amen. even in the evening it will mean that the strength of the morning is still there in your life in the afternoon when the sun is up and when you've been here and there the power the excitement the unction the ability of the morning will still be there in your life in jesus name so that in every area of your life there is you know not a period somebody will find you happy another time sad another time uh, progressive, another time drawing back. Look at that verse 5. That in everything, in everything, in everything, ye are enriched by him. In all utterance and in all knowledge, even as the testimony of Christ was confirmed in you. Look at verse 7. So that... Ye come behind in no gift. Ye come behind in no gift. You'll not be at the tail. I said you'll not be at the tail. You'll be in the forefront in Jesus' name. That you'll not come behind waiting for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Everything you need to have that better life better offering, better gift, the Lord will give unto you. I'm reading now from, first, uh, from Hebrews chapter 8. Hebrews chapter 8, and we're reading from verse 6. Hebrews chapter 8, verse 6. But now, as he obtained a more excellent ministry, that's Christ, that's our Savior, that's our Redeemer, ministry to minister to us, ministry to minister to his church, ministry to minister to his bride. Now, he has obtained a more excellent ministry by how much also is the mediator of a better covenant. The covenant is for us, and the provisions of the covenant, they are for us, and is better than the old covenant, which was established upon better promises. Look at verse 9. Not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the, in the day when I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt, because they continued not in my covenant, and I regarded them not. They continued not in my covenant, so I regarded them not. They did not regard me, so I regarded them not. They did not respect me, so I regarded them not. They did not honor me. They did not observe my ways, so I regarded them not. I wanted to bless them and do good unto them and give them the provisions of my covenant, but they didn't pay attention to me, so I regarded them not. I pray God will regard you. I pray God will honor you. But you know, if you don't regard the word of God, if you don't accept the word of God, if you say, what are they going to stop all this? Are we going to read the whole Bible in one message? This is the last Sunday of the year, and I need to prepare you for the coming year. And thank God you are receiving the word of God. Thank God you regard him. Thank God you receive him. He will regard you. Look at verse 10. For this uh, the covenant that I will make of the house of Israel at those days, says the Lord, I will put my laws into their mind and write them in their hearts. And I will be to them a God and they shall be to me a people. Will be the people of God. Look at chapter 12, chapter 12, we're reading from verse 22. Chapter 12, we're looking at verse 22. It says in verse 22, But ye are come unto Mount Zion, 
unto the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, and to the innumerable company of angels, to the general assembly and church of the firstborn, which are written in heaven, and to God, the judge of all the earth, and to the spirits of just men made perfect, and to Jesus. We have come to Jesus. I said, we have come to Jesus, the final solution. And to Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant, and to the blood of sprinkling that speaketh, tell me, better things than that of Abel. That's Christ. That's our Lord. We have come to him. He blessed others before us. He will bless you. Chapter 13 of Hebrews. Hebrews chapter 13. We're reading from verse 8. In verse 8, Jesus Christ, the same yesterday and today and forever, he'll prove himself the same in your life in Jesus' name. Be not carried about with diverse and strange doctrines, for it is a good thing that the heart be established with grace, established with grace, not with meats which have not profited them that, have, that are occupied therein. Look at verse 12. Wherefore, Jesus also, that he might sanctify the people with his own blood, suffered without the gate. Verse 13, let us go forth therefore unto him, everyone. In this day, final Sunday of the year, end of the year, final worship, end of the year, let us, all of us, those who are saved, those who are sanctified, those who are filled with the Holy Ghost, young people, adults, young adults, everyone, members, ministers, invitees, newcomers, let all of us go forth, therefore, unto him without the calm, bearing his reproach. For here have we no continuing city, but we seek one to come. That city will get there. Yeah. I will get there. Verse 20, now the God of peace that brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you perfect. Can you be perfect? I said, can you be perfect? A perfect believer. A perfect minister. A perfect husband. A perfect wife. A perfect brother. A perfect sister. A perfect helper make you perfect in every good work to do his will walking in you that which is well pleasing in his sight through Jesus Christ to whom the glory forever and ever forever and ever the better days have come now the better life has come now. The better provision has come now. We're looking at Ezekiel chapter 36. Ezekiel chapter 36. And we're reading from verse 11. And I will multiply upon you man and beast. And they shall increase and bring forth fruit. And I will settle you. I am settled. 
I said, I am settled. I said, look at the coming year. I'm not panicking. I am settled. I said, look at the way and the past before me. I'm not fretting and fidgeting. I am settled. As you go back home and you look outside the door, outside the glass of your vehicle, look beyond. Your future is bright. Because now he has settled you. And then he says in that verse 11, I will do better unto you than at your beginning. Yeah. Do you know you are going to make speedy progress? Yeah. Great progress? Yeah. Irreversible progress? Yeah. Because I will do better unto you than at your beginning. And you shall know that I am the Lord. You will know it. Look at verse 37. Verse 37 of that same chapter does says the Lord God, I will yet for this be inquired of by the house of Israel to do it for them. Don't just fold your hand and close your mouth and close your eyes and just say, He will do it because He said He will do it. He said, You must spend time. And you must call upon him. I will yet for all this be inquired of by the house of Israel to do it for them. And I will increase them with men like a flock. Amen. Ezekiel chapter 34. Ezekiel chapter 34, verse 26. Ezekiel chapter 34, verse 26. And I will make them and the places round about my hill a blessing. And he will make you and the places round your house a blessing. And I will cause shower to come down in a season. There shall be showers of blessing. The rain is beginning to fall. The blessings are beginning to come down. The refreshing is beginning to come upon you, upon your household, upon your children, upon your parents. Upon every loved one, there shall be showers of blessing. It's beginning right now. What are you? Why don't you rise up and tell him, let those blessings come. The very best of God. The very best of God for you, even at this time. Tell the Lord, tell the Lord. Tell the Lord, final Sunday of the year, you shall pray beyond all the prayers you prayed during the year. Desire, demand, be passionate about it. Lord, I need you, more of you, your very best for my life. God's gift of a better life, abundant life, a rich life, exciting life, victorious life, conquering life, overcoming life, abundant overflowing life. For you, tell him. No sorrow, no shame, no suffering, no failure, no iniquity, no sin, no transgression, free. For the abundance of the grace of God in your life, free. For the boundless grace of God in your life, free.
grace and peace. There will be peace in your heart, peace in your mind, peace in your soul, peace, purity. Purity in your heart, purity in your imagination, purity in your soul, purity in your character, purity in your utterance, purity in your mouth, purity in your touch, purity in your communication, grace, and purity. Stable life, sanctified life, satisfied life, victorious life, settled, steadfast, no shame, no yielding to temptation, no yielding to the powers that be, settled, victoriously settled, courageously settled, happily settled, a refreshed life, happy life. Tell him. Things are not like they used to be. Life is not as it used to be. You know the provision of the Lord for you? Desire them. Possess them. You know the promise of the Lord for you? Hold on to them, standing on the promises that cannot fail. Healing available, health available, deliverance available, redemption available, total freedom available. He has given you the final solution. Grace, 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 marvelous grace, that is greater than all your sin. Infinite grace, overflowing grace, surpassing grace, available. Receive enough, receive more than enough. Whatever despair, like the sea was cold, is upon your life. Yes, grace, full, free, abundant. Great grace, glorious grace, growing grace, sufficient grace for the whole of your life. Grace to be righteous. Grace to be holy, grace to be happy, grace to be fulfilled, grace to be strengthened, grace to be strong, all available. In response to the abundant grace of God, give 
of yourself to the master. No holding back. Give the very best of yourself, the very best of your talent, the very best of your service, and give it by faith. Give it in love. Whatsoever is not of faith is sin. Whatever you give grudgingly, not acceptable, a sin. Whatever you give grumbling, that's not by faith, a sin. Whatever you give complaining to your friend, complaining to your husband, complaining to your wife, whatever you give complaining, murmuring, it's not of faith, a sin. Your tithes and offering, give cheerfully. Your money, material things, give happily. Your substance, give happily. God expects everyone to pay tax and offering. You have any income? As a Christian worker, tax and offering. As a minister, tax and offering. As a pastor, tax and offering. As a member, tax and offering. And you even go beyond the ten percent. Just to give cheerfully. And the Lord has prospered you. Ten percent, twelve percent, fifteen percent, twenty percent. Why not? Others have done it and they have been mightily blessed. Do you know what will bring a blessing upon your life this year? Your strength, your physical energy. Your time, your training. The church doesn't have to run after you. Make yourself available. We don't know what you have to offer. You are the one that will say, I have this to offer, I have this to offer, I can offer this. You give yourself to the Lord and then you give yourself to the leadership of the church because God is not here physically he has his representatives and you give honestly transparently single-mindedly Cheerfully, you're not being an Ananias or Sapphira. And then you ask the Lord, the promised outpouring, the promised outpouring, the promised overflowing blessing. Here am I, Lord, pour it on me. He says, prove me now herewith. If I will not open the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, that you will not have enough room to receive it. Whatever is not of love is sin. So as you give yourself, give your substance, give your time, give everything you have to God and to the leadership of the church and to the church, 
Offer everything in love. Offer everything by faith. You will receive and I will bless you. In Jesus' name we pray. Last Sunday of the year, amen. Affirmation, confirmation, assurance, establishment of all the benefits of final solution, amen. Your amen has reached heaven. And your blessings from heaven will come down mightily in Jesus' name. Every promise of God in your life, every prophecy of the Lord in your life, every provision of the Lord in your life, they are all done and fulfilled in Jesus' name. No sorrow this coming year. No sign this coming year. No crying this coming year. No accident for you this coming year. And all the 2020 realization of the promise of God will come upon you in Jesus' name. Raise up your hand for your 2020 confirmation. 2020, 2020, 2020. Clear as crystal. Pure as a diamond. And nothing will reverse the promise of God, the power of God in your life in Jesus' name. Father, in Jesus' name. We thank you for your love. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your thinking about every one of us. I'm asking, O oh Lord, as you have promised, so will it be done in every life in Jesus' name. For everyone, everywhere, whether in, at the headquarters here in Lagos, or in the suburb in Lagos, or in Lagos State, or in all the states of Nigeria, all the countries in Africa, all the countries everywhere beyond Africa, all those who are receiving the service by streaming, everyone that has uh, joined us in this service, oh Lord, sweep all the cobweb and all the dirt and all the evil of the past year away from every life in Jesus' name. For those who do not know how to pray And for those who think they have not prayed enough And they have not prayed well Oh Lord we say The prayer of Jesus for everyone The intercession of Jesus for everyone Will be confirmed in Jesus name Lord sweep all things that come from darkness away from their lives all things from the devil away from their lives. All things from evil power away from their lives. All things that we brought on ourselves by ignorance, by carelessness, in your mercy, in your love, take everything away in Jesus' name. Smile on everyone. Shower your blessing upon everyone. Rain of blessing. Showers of blessing. I pray, Lord, bring upon everyone in Jesus' name. We cannot forget. We will not forget. All through this year, all those who have sacrificially ministered unto us. 
either they have ministered to us, taking the message to the church by all these gadgets, or taking it to the various nations and everywhere. Oh Lord, as you are blessing the receivers, these special givers of blessing to us, bless them in Jesus' name. All those who have given up their time fully, completely, and have abandoned themselves to the service of God, Lord, I pray, beyond what we can ask, beyond what they can ask themselves, sometimes they don't even have time to think of themselves, pray for themselves, or listen to the messages themselves, because they are ministering to us, oh Lord, I pray, abundance of blessing. Overflowing blessing. You grind unto them in Jesus' name. Our ushers, our security, and the people cooking for us in the kitchen when we're having programs everywhere. And they don't complain. They're just there. They're just there. Oh Lord, I pray. Abundance of blessing upon everyone in Jesus' name. As those who do security, I pray that you'll keep their family secured. And you'll keep their life secured in Jesus' name. Our ushers, I pray, Lord, you supervise their life. And every blessing they ought to have, they will have in Jesus' name. Our children church choir, our youth choir, our campus choir, and our adult choir. When Jehoshaphat said those uh, singers and they started singing, then you defeated and destroyed enemies. I pray, Lord, in the lives and the families of all our choir members and singers, as they have been singing, all the songs they have sung, their practice and everything, and they're so happy and excited. Oh Lord, I pray as the enemies of Jehoshaphat and Judah was crushed and crumbled, all the enemies in their lives crush them, cancel them in Jesus' name. As David was playing the instrument, the evil spirit in Saul fled away. I pray, Lord, all these instrumentalists, every evil spirit hovering around their house, hovering, hovering around their apartment, hovering around their children, their husband, their wife, you spirit, I command you, come out in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray that all our fathers and mothers, mommies and daddies, and all the people of God, as we have uh, participated in this uh, final, uh, final uh, service of the year, oh Lord, I pray all the miracles of the final solution, all the benefits of the final solution, and all the engagement of the final solution, all the desires of the final solution. Oh Lord, I pray, shower it upon everyone in Jesus' name. For everyone this coming year from today to 2020, Lord, I pray, there shall be showers of blessing. My brother there, there shall be showers of blessing. My sister there, there shall be showers of blessing. Boys and girls, sons and daughters, there will be showers of blessing. Whatever brought tears to your eyes in the past year, all your tears are wiped away. And whatever you are asking for today, I want to see our pastor, I want to see our GS, this and this, my child, my husband, my wife, and this and that, you have seen the Lord and the blessing of God has come upon you. They'll bring you out of every predicament. Lord, confirm your blessing upon every life. Settle everyone. Better things for everyone. Better life for everyone. Better provision for everyone. No lack. No loss. No limitation. Lord, in a practical way, confirm it in every life. We well, thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.